and my music. There's like nobody here. Everyone's like, nah, you took too long to figure out your shit. I wouldn't blame you. Annie, are you okay? Can you hear me and Alien Ant Farm? What you tell us that you're okay? Then he struck you. A crescendo, Annie. <sighs> okay, good. Peanut butter is here because everyone left. Everyone else left. Can you confirm, babe, if you can hear me and the song? Sam B. Is that a confirmation, Sam B, or is that just like, a, yes, you're excited to be here? <laughs> You've been struck by a smooth criminal. Can hear both. Okay. Hi, Melina. Hi, Sam B. Hi, Peanut Butter. I am so sorry for that delay. Um, I don't know why, but literally every time, I, everything works until I try to go live, and then as soon as I go live, like you either can't hear my voice or you can't hear my iTunes. And then I have to restart my computer like three times. I don't change any settings. I just restart my computer three times and it works. <sighs> so I don't even know how we're going to figure that out, peanut butter, but it's stressing me out. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys for joining. I'm sorry for the delay. I will... Try to fix that in the future. No, we don't do stress, peanut butter says. Uh, OK, so I wanted to kick things off today with one fun announcement. No stress in her, says Melina. Uh, and then I got a question on IG that I wanted to answer. And then we will get to Homer. So the shoot, and now you can't see the thing that I wanted to announce. Can you guys see? Can you guys see a giveaway bar at the top that says one dollar? Are you okay? You okay, Annie? Yes, okay, okay. So so that's our new fun thing. So um, like I've been saying, I want to start doing giveaways for my subscribers. And I, I think the, a good way to do it is going to be to base it around donations. So there's a bar at the top now that says subscriber giveaway. And there's a dollar amount on the left and the right. And it's a goal. We want to get to the $100 mark. And when we get to the $100 mark, I'll do like a raffle type giveaway with all my subscribers. So I think that'll be something fun for us to do. Um, and the, the way the donations work is every time someone cheers, which is if you look in the chat, there's like a little diamondy looking button. And that's how you can cheer. And I'm speaking slowly and like I don't understand it because I don't quite understand it. But Basically, anyone can cheer. You don't have to be a subscriber. It can just be anyone in the channel can cheer. And you can donate whatever dollar amount you want. And one bit, you cheer in bits. And one bit equals one US dollar cent. So I think it was Sam B who gave us our first cheer, actually. Or it could have been Bring Punch and Pie. But I think one of you cheered the other day, last time I was live, for 100 bits, which equals one dollar. So that's why... Our giveaway amount is already at one dollar because I, I started it at one to count in that cheer. But now if anyone does the cheer from here on out, we should see that bar move up. And I made it a hundred dollars because uh, I think that's like a reasonable goal that we can probably get to fairly soon. I don't it might take like a month or a couple months, I don't know. Um, but hopefully it can happen kind of soon. And when we get to that point, I'll do some kind of poll with my subscribers. It wasn't you, Sambi. It must have been Bring Punch and Pie then. So when we get to the $100, I'll send out like a poll to my subscribers and you guys can let me know which of my pieces uh, you want the giveaway to be of. So like any piece on my site that's $100 or less, we can do the giveaway for. Um, 
And if you pick a piece that's like less than $100, like you pick an ornament that's like 80 or something, then we'll start the next donation bar with that $20. <laughs> Sam V, you did you see now you're a part of the cheer squad now. Thank you. 100 and it it didn't go up, did it? Cool. Cool, guys. Oh my god, peanut butter. Why am I so bad at technology? Hold on. Let me see if I can figure this out real quick. Thank you, Sambi. Yes, that was a cheer. You did it correct. There's something incorrect on my end. Compose it, hallelujah. 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 So there's a thing called Streamlabs where you can set up these little widgets. And I set up one as a goal to count donations. Give me just one second. She cut your hair from your lips. She drew. Melina says, maybe there's just a delay. I know sometimes in my friend's stream, there's a delay sometimes. And when she makes new emotes, it takes a while to show up. I know there can be a delay, but the issue I'm having is that I'm, oh, you know what? Hold on, hold on, I have an idea. If I go to my donation goal source and I copy the URL it's attached to, and I put the URL in my browser, doesn't do anything at all. Subscriber. All right, I'm just going to set up a new one. Set it to $2. Start goal. Copy URL. Edit my source over here. Okay, now we can't see our dollar amounts, but we can see that we're at 2%. And that's gonna have to be good enough for now. I will try to get the dollar amounts to come back. But thank you, Sam B, for increasing that. Hopefully someone else at some point does another donation and it'll work, we'll see. Um, but Melina, that was a good point around the emotes. So the other thing I did was I gave us, I gave my subscribers emotes. I covered peanut butter's face in peanut butter and I took some fun pictures of him and I turned those into emotes for subscribers. Uh, I got an email today that one of them was approved and I think the other two are still pending review, but then I think it takes a couple hours for them to actually be able to be used. So if you guys don't see the fun emotes yet, I think you should see them by the next stream. There, I have one. I did one. It's peanut butter covered in peanut butter smiling. There's one of him smiling. John, you subscribed. Thank you, John. You're a sweetie. And now you can use Trip's PB emotes. Um, so thank you, John. You're the best. Um, so there's a happy peanut butter. I think there's an angry peanut butter if you're tier three. And I think there's like a thumbs up peanut butter if you're tier one or tier two. I'm not sure, there's some out there and I will add more, but that's just like another fun subscriber benefit that I'm trying to roll out here. I was in the mouths looking into the mirror. Does that make sense to everyone? Does that sound like a cool thing to do? Hopefully. Again, like if you subscribers have any ideas of like benefits you want, just let me know. Um, 
this is mainly for you guys to interact with me and have fun. So I want it to be whatever you guys want. But I think the giveaways will be a fun thing. Uh, OK. Sam B says, wait, where do I find Peanut Butter's face? So if you go to the chat and you go to the little smiley face where it says send a message, you click on the smiley face, you might. Oh, and you gifted, you gifted a sub, John, to Mel, I assume. You're my first gift sub, I think. Thank you. Double thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Mel. Um, if you, Sam B, if you go to the smiley face, you might have to scroll down a little bit, but you should see something that says Glasswork Pixie and then all the possible emotes under there. And you can probably only see one. <laughs> John, it says you gifted it to Trit. Yeah, it does. I'm going to say that was your fault, not my fault. Peanut Butter, do you have the channel set up so that everyone who gifts a sub, just it goes to you? Because that's not very nice. That's what you've done. John, I don't know if, if you made an error and you can fix it. But if you can't, uh, I can work with you later to like, get that corrected or like refund you. And then you can do it again or whatever. Sam B says, I don't see it. But maybe it just hasn't loaded. I'll look again later. Yeah, because Twitch said it might take a couple hours to load. So maybe it's like working for some people and not others. Melina could do it. Oh, I know why. Because that one that I made was a tier two emote. And Melina's in tier two. And the tier one hasn't yet been approved. So you will get one. But it probably just won't show up until, I don't know, later today. Peanut butter can't talk. No worries, babe. Um, John will figure it out. All right. So the other thing I wanted to get into before I started back on Homer was that I got a question from someone on Instagram around how I put my designs into Illustrator. And I'm trying to, any questions I get in from my DMs on Instagram, I'm trying to tell people, gamer guy, 4200. Hi, thank you for the follow. Uh, I'm trying to tell people that I'm going to answer your questions live on Twitch rather than via Instagram DM because a couple reasons. One, I spend a lot of time answering people on Instagram, like sometimes hours a day. And if I answer them here, then it's like I can be working while I'm answering. So it's going to save myself time and money. Um, Second, I think I can give better answers here because if you have a question about my tools or my process, I can actually show you. So I think it's going to be more valuable to spend time talking to people here rather than Instagram. And then thirdly, if I answer you here, Glass by Groves, hi, thank you for joining and following. Uh, you guys should all look up Glass by Groves on Instagram because she does some, or he, I assume you're a woman. I don't know why I assume that, but they do some really cool stained glass work, a lot of like anime characters. Um, I love your work. She, okay, she. I don't know why I assume that, but I'm glad I got it right. Uh, so yeah, if I just start answering messages here instead of in there, it's gonna be more valuable to everyone because like everyone can see what I'm talking about instead of just the person that asked me in the DM. Rocksteady. So I don't know if the, woman who asked me the question is in here. If you are, you're a sweetheart and you are very respectful and kind and I appreciate that and I hope that I'm able to show you a thing or two. Uh, so she had asked how I, how I get my designs, my hand-drawn designs into Adobe Illustrator and then how I like resize them and such. So I was gonna pull up Adobe because I don't yet have this design in Adobe so I figured I could just pull it up and like quickly give you an overview of how I would put it in there so you understand the process. Glass by Grove says, for some reason, a lot of people think I'm a dude. I think it's the anime because that's like a guy thing, right? Like, aren't there way more guys who are into anime? Like, I know I kind of judged anime before I met my husband. I kind of thought it was for like weirdos. Um, and then when I met my husband, he was into a lot of it and he introduced me to it and now my my opinion has totally changed not that i'm like an anime freak or anything yet but 
I think it's a lot cooler than I used to. And I think a lot of girls have that opinion. All right, let me show you my monitor. All right, so we are gonna, what I do is I hand draw my designs, just freehand pencil and paper, and then I take a picture of it and I email it to myself and get it on my computer. So then I would open it up in Illustrator and you can see it's super big. So we're just gonna click on it. And I'm like not an Illustrator expert by any means. I just figured out how to kind of use it like sometime last year. So I'm probably not doing things the correct way and it could probably be done a lot more efficiently. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but what I would do is bring it in here and you can see the width and the height are super big. So I would just change this to whatever I wanted my design to be. And the height and width proportions are linked. You can link them or unlink them, whatever you want. Um, but I would want mine to be like eight by eight. So I would resize it down to whatever size roughly that I'm going for. And you could change the size at that step or when you're done, when you have the digitized format, it doesn't really matter when you uh, do the sizing. John says, that's sexist. Your husband is a weirdo though. <laughs> Agreed on both counts, John. So I'd bring it in a little bit and what would I do? What would I do? Um, I lock the bottom image, my hand-drawn image, so that way that's there, it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I just kind of uh, fuck about with the pen tool and the shapes and shit until I can get things how I want them. So I really only know how to use like the, the curvature tool and the pen tool and the shape tool. But so what I would do with this design, for instance, is click on my curve tool And you can just start like literally tracing around your design. And you can take like a really quick YouTube dive into how to use Illustrator. But essentially with the curve tool, uh, you're just like clicking around to match curves. And if you want it to be like a sharp corner, like right here, I want it to be a sharp corner, not a curve. I'm gonna hold down Alt. And same thing here. And now this one is a curve, so I'm not holding down Alt. Now I'm holding down Alt. Holding down Alt again. No Alt. You know, so I'm just um, tracing around. Rough guy. Enough guy. Buff guy. And don't worry, I'm not gonna do the whole design. I just wanna get one line in here to make a point. All right, so we have our line or our path, whatever they call it in here. Uh, we don't want our path to have a fill, so we're gonna cancel out the fill. We're gonna give it a stroke. Hey, Anna, thank you for popping in to say hi. I appreciate it. I am just uh, giving a quick overview of how I would transfer a hand-drawn design into Adobe Illustrator. So you can see I have my nice line over here. Uh, if there was a very geometric shape like Homer's eye, for instance, I would go over here to my rectangle tool, right click on it, make it a circle. And I would draw it a circle. If I hold down shift as I draw, it'll be a perfect circle. So I would just move that about to where I want it. Um, and I would just do that for all my, all my lines. And then once I had all my design lines in there, you can unhide your original image. So only your design would be left. Um, and that's about it. And then like, of course you can, the cool thing about Illustrator is you could fill uh, any part of your design with different colors. So that's like a good ability to for a glass artist to mess around with like how it could look with different glasses. And in terms of resizing it, 
once you have your entire design there, you could just group all of your design together and you could like make it bigger or smaller. And you could also type in those values. If you want it to be like a very specific size, you could type it in. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Mel says, hey, Jackie, John kept pestering me to say hi to let you know I'm watching to support. But we all know that the real ones are the silent ones. Mel, I could not agree more. And I just assume you're always here. Even when I'm not streaming, you're like you're with me in spirit. I do assume that. Uh, Anna says, did not know you can import your hand-drawn stuff in there and make it so much better and repeatable. Yes, girl, I just figured it out last year too and I wish I'd done it sooner. Did that, hopefully that made sense. I'm gonna switch back to my camera view, but if you guys have any more questions on that, uh, let me know. And I don't think that girl who asked the question is in here right now, but girly, if you're watching this later and I didn't explain something well or you still have questions, let me know. John says Mel wouldn't unfollow and follow to pop up on the screen. Leave Mel alone. She's being a shy lurker and that's okay. Anna says we'll do ask later. <laughs> okay. All right, I think we're good to get foiling on Homer. Um, let me bring this down a little bit. I think we probably want a nice close-up view for foiling, right? I'm very paranoid that this camera is going to fall down. I mentioned on a, a previous stream that I built the thing it's mounted to the wall with and I did not build it well and it's already fallen once and I'm like so scared it's gonna fall on my glasses and working so let's all keep our fingers crossed that that doesn't happen John says to Anna I think you should be able to do the same with a free software like GIMP yeah Anna I don't know if you were in here when we were talking about this with other people before, but there's another glass artist that men mentioned GIMP and Krita. G-I-M-P is GIMP and Krita is K-R-I-T-A. And those are two free programs you can download online that are very similar to, I think, Illustrator and Photoshop. And other glass artists use them. So if you don't want to pay the monthly fee for Illustrator and or Photoshop, because they are really expensive, you could do that too. Melly says, I miss, I miss the bush grinding. Everyone missed it because I had to use my ring saw to do the really tiny curves, and I don't have a camera over my ring saw, so I figured it would be better for me to just do it off stream because you would just be staring at nothing and listening to me. But again, if we can get a couple more subscribers going here, I can have enough money to buy another web webcam, and I'll put it over my ring saw, and then I can do stuff like that live. Anna says, I imagine this far bigger, the Simpson piece. You also say, oh yeah, that happened to me. You dropped your phone on your glass? Oh God, I'm sorry. That's not a fun day. Imagine if you did that and your phone screen broke and your glass broke. I'd probably stab someone. Peanut butter, it'd have to be peanut butter. Um, I'm not going to ignore chat. I just want to kind of get going, explain what I'm going to do on this. And then I'll go back to what you guys are saying. This might be easier if I do it on a, like a white surface. You might be able to see it better. <laughs> Me in a cabin by the sea. Okay. So... Normally when you're foiling, you can just grab your foil and go. But in a piece like this, with very tiny curves, especially sharp, like right angle edges, it's going to be easier if you use the technique called saddling. And that's when you put copper foil around that right angle edge, 
like this way and you burnish it and foil it, make sure it's all stuck good. And then you put your long strip of foil around the whole thing. And then you use an X-Acto knife to come back in and clean, like cut away the excess. And that will make more sense when I start doing it. But that's just the technique I'm gonna use. And when I make my saddles, I usually use thicker copper foil. So like the one I normally use is this one, 7, 30, 30 seconds of an inch. For my saddling, I'll probably use this one, which is a little bit wider. It's a quarter of an inch, or maybe even a 5 16th one. So. Mm. Glass by Grove says, use Procreate. Yeah. That's another really big one that I personally have not yet had a chance to use. But I know a lot of like the more established glass artists, I think, like the ones that have been doing it for a while and are kind of big in the glass game. <laughs> John, you don't have to keep gifting subs. I could fix your, your trip one, but thank you. Tell me, what did you do something wrong or was that my stream that messed it up? Um, but Glass by Groves, I do, I've heard really good things about Procreate. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking that thick piece of 5 16th foil and I'm going to bend it into my first curve. Rusty. And you can use anything small enough to get in there. I have a handy pair of tweezers. And I basically just like shove it into that curve to make sure the foil is stuck really well into there. And then I'll lay it down horizontal and kind of do the same thing. I'm just applying pressure into that curve to get the foil on there. And then I'm burnishing. Burnishing just means like smoothing out both sides of the foil. Gonna push you around. Well, I will. Well, I will. See? So now it's nice and tight in that curve. Oh, my camera's like sometimes focusing on it really well. Sorry, it keeps going in and out. But I'll do that for all of these curves, every single one. And then we'll take our 732 foil and we'll put it all around the outside. And then we'll take our X-Acto knife and come back and like cut off that excess. Does that make sense? Anna says she has to go dinner time again. Bye Anna, thank you for joining. Sam B says, I'm very interested in the possibility of a camera at your ring saw. Yeah, I think a lot of people probably would be um, and I was thinking about it, it's going to be kind of tough to get like a good angle that's going to allow you to see properly because there's a lot more water flow going over that blade than for my grinder. Like I get very wet when I'm using it. That didn't sound right. So I'm worried about the water flow like getting in the way of the camera. But so it might take a little bit to like get a good view, but we will. Well, will, I will. Mel says, woohoo. We weren't friends on Twitch. You and John weren't friends on Twitch? That's why it didn't work. So I didn't see the option to gift to a specific user for the first time. So I think by default, it went to the only person on my friends list. That's really strange. Like, don't you think it should have been like, you don't have any, like, who do you want this to go to? Like, it should have asked you instead of just guessing who you wanted it to go to. And I think I should have actually burnished this on. I'm going to take this off because maybe I can show you. Like this side, the foil is very smooth. And this side, there's a slight bump in it. And that's because I should have stuck it on the back side first. But I wasn't thinking properly because I'm streaming and trying to explain. But if there's going to be a bump in the foil, it's going to make it a little bit harder to run the X-Acto knife over it. 
and if, a, if there's going to be a harder one like that, I want it to be on the back, just in case it doesn't look as clean. Shoe around. Glass by Grove says, I've always done the opposite. Be your way makes more sense. And also, that's what she said. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so you mean you've, you used to put, or you put the foil down first in a long strip around the whole edge, and then you do the saddling? I think that's what you mean, because I used to do the same thing. And then, because, um, how do I explain it? Because in my mind, I was like, uh, the foil, when it goes around a curve, is just going to break. It's going to have a gap wherever it has a gap. So I'll just let it do that. And then afterward, I'll patch over where it had the gap. But if you do it this way, you can force it to have the break in a certain part of the foil. So you can like control where those gaps are. And it just makes more sense to me to do it that way because you have more control over it. Like when I put the foil around the full edge, I'm going to take my tweezers and like purposefully break it in each of these curves. So I'm controlling where it breaks as opposed to the other way. It's just going to break wherever it wants to. I am loving you more. John says, I'm still convinced Trip rigged it. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't be surprised. He's a sketchy kind of guy, you know? So that one worked out better than the last one. Um, I'm just going to go around and do this to every single one of these little itty bitty curves. So hopefully this isn't like a super boring stream for you guys. But, you know, feel free to only listen if you want instead of um, watching me do this literally like a hundred times. Like a lot of glass artists probably avoid patterns like this, specifically because of the time it takes to do this, especially if you don't like foiling. But I love every step of the process and this is like, I'd rather be doing nothing else in the world than this right now, so I don't care if it takes me two weeks. I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Melly says, how in the world is the foil sticking to the glass like tape? Because it is tape. The front of it is copper, and the back is uh, an adhesive sticky, has some sort of adhesive sticky substance on it. So it is just like tape. I'm loving you more. Loving you more. And that's another tip for any like new glass artist. If you can't get your foil to stick really well, because sometimes it doesn't stick super well, you should grind the edge of your glass. If you create a rougher surface, it's going to stick a lot better than if you just cut your glass and didn't grind it. And then also, you can get like alcoholic isopropyl wipes from like Walgreens or Target or wherever and wipe down the edges of your glass with that, and that'll remove any like oils or dirt or whatever and make your foil stick way, way, way better. I usually have those around, but I've been using lead so much that I kind of toss them. Or I didn't toss them, I just don't have them out anymore. Sambi says I do strip, then saddle too. Yeah, everyone does that. It's just like the way you're taught to do it. But I think this way is actually like a lot more logical. Because also then when you are cutting with your X-Acto knife, you're cutting the excess foil off. Uh, it can't move around on you because it's like trapped under the longer foil strip. Does that make sense? Because the other problem I would have sometimes when I was saddling the reverse way of this, 
is that when I'd go to cut off the excess with my X-Acto knife, the saddle would like move around. And that's not going to happen if you do it this way. I guess your way could be faster because there's a chance that the foil won't break in every one of the little curves. So then you wouldn't have to saddle every single curve like I'm doing. But like I said, for those two other benefits I mentioned earlier, I just prefer this way. And also, like I said, I don't mind how much time it takes, really. Glass by Groves. You agree, it makes more sense this way. Okay, cool. Look, was I able to give you some valuable knowledge the first time you joined in? That would make me happy because you're hella talented, so I wouldn't expect to be able to teach you that much. <laughs> Woohoo! But it's so worth it. Yes, I agree. This is worth it. Melly says, what? what, what? <laughs> Melly, you should take a stained glass lesson one day and then start making glass yourself. Melly's very artistic. Oh, Melina, what, what is that big commission you were working on? I think last time you were in my stream, you mentioned that you were working on like a big commission that you were nervous about. And I wanted to know like exactly what that was, but you declined to tell me. You don't have to tell me, of course, no pressure, but the people want to know. Sam B says, I'm also convinced that burnishing it heats it and helps the adhesive stick better, like your steel wool trick for lead. Oh, I didn't even think of that, but you could be correct. Is this close enough, by the way? Could get like way closer. But I'm also scared to fuck with this too much in case it falls down. Totally lost if I'm asking for help. It's only because. CMB says, exactly. I'm never sure where it's going to break on a long curve, so I just do it after. One time I did it your way, and it never even broke. <laughs> oh my god. Imagine if that was the case on this one. Like, I spend two hours doing this, and then it magically doesn't break. You can buy thicker foil, too. Like, I didn't even realize until sometime last year, that foil comes in different thicknesses. And I bought some of the thicker kind, and it does that way less, like it breaks way less. Um, but it's also, if you're doing really tiny curves like this, it's a lot harder to bend into the curves, which is why I'm not using it here. But if I was maybe like on a curve like this, if I was scared it was going to break, I might use a thicker piece of foil there. Glass by Grove says, I'm completely self-taught, so I constantly try to learn more from everyone. Glass is such a varied art form. Everyone has their own tips and tricks. So true. I, too, am mostly self-taught. My dad has done it as a hobby my whole life. So he taught me just like how to use a grinder and cut glass. But um, I didn't like live with him or anything while I was learning. I started teaching myself when I was already out of college. So a lot of it I had to just learn on my own. And so much of it came from just going on Instagram and following all the other artists that I thought were doing good work and just like observing everything they did. Shout out to House of Pale, because I creeped on her account for literally months before I made my own. And I learned a lot from watching her. Tell me, what do you see? A lot of people recommend getting lessons before like really starting stained glass. I, I like kind of really disagree with that. I don't think it's necessary at all. Probably shouldn't be saying that if like my goal one day is to like do virtual workshops and stuff. It's necessary to learn from me. I mean, you're not going to find a better teacher. <laughs> but like really, I don't know. There's so much information out there on the internet. 
and on social media, as long as you have enough like patience to trial and error your way through stuff, I really don't think like in-person lessons is a, a must. Nelly says, I can't remember the dimensions of the canvas, but it's a big horizontal rectangular canvas that I'm painting a scene from Howell's Moving Castle, the flower field, and the little house in the back. Okay, I don't know what Howell's Moving Castle is, but it sounds like a castle that moves with some nice flower fields around it. And that sounds like it would be a baller piece of art to have. What kind of paint do you use? Acrylic or oil? Melly says, I haven't seen, oh, it's a Ghibli movie? Totoro was my only one so far. I, I know who Ghibli is. I know about like the cult following and the art. Um, is Spirited Away a Ghibli movie? Because that's the only one that I've maybe, I, I have seen it a few times, but I don't know if it's a Ghibli or not. And I'm being really delicate with this one because this little uh, outcropping of glass is like super thin and I could easily snap him off. Let's hope I don't do that. Could be apocalypse if I listen to the first straw. Glass by Groves has confirmed that Spirited Away is a Ghibli movie. I thought so. That movie's so cool. It's like weirdly depressing though. Like the no face dude. I have strong feelings about him. I don't know why. He makes me very sad. But the little dust balls make me very happy. Melly says, I just took an oil painting class, but I'm deaf more comfortable with acrylic. I started with oil, but I hate oil, to be honest, so I'm gonna switch. It takes forever to dry, and I don't have that patience. Now, normally, Melly, we are on the same page, but I'm very opposite opinion on painting with you there. I took a couple painting courses in college, so I got an art minor, and I love oil painting. We did both acrylic and oil, but I work really slowly. You probably work a lot quicker than me. So acrylic, I have the opposite problem, whereas like acrylic dries too fast for me. I always felt rushed when I was using acrylic. Woo, woo. I want you bad, I want you bad. Nelly says, are the dust balls the same ones in Totoro? I don't know. Glass by Groves might know. But I don't know. Woo woo. I can do it for you. Make your wishes come true. Put it on me. Yeah, they are the same. Soot sprites. Yeah, that was it. Soot sprites. Melly says, I have an art minor too. Of course you do, because we have so much in common. But your, your major that you're working on is the video game design, right? I think you mentioned that. Um, if you made a cute little fused soot sprite necklace, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Not that I don't want to buy all of your stuff. I absolutely have my eye on the vanilla sprinkle ice cream earrings. I think those might be my favorite earrings I've ever made. The vanilla sprinks. Either those or the white daisies. So, good choice. Um, 
Glass by Groves, maybe I can ask you about this, your opinion, because like Sam B just mentioned this soot sprite, and there are so many like video game or movie characters, or I mean, look what I'm making here, the Simpsons character, but like I'm pretty terrified to um, really make any designs that are already like copyrighted or trademarked by these large corporations like Disney or Ghibli. But like someone like you, like you pretty much exclusively make designs based off of that. Does that worry you? I'm just like very terrified that like I'll get a letter from Disney one day saying that they're suing me for $10 million. I think we can get away with not, not saddling these curves. This one though, we need it. Money on me. So Sam B, that, that soot sprite is a fantastic idea, but I think I'm really gonna, I'm like scared doing, honestly, I'm like, should I just like delete all the videos that I worked on Homer with? Cause I'm kind of scared even doing this. But I'm sure if you reached out to another glass artist with a kiln, they'd probably be down to do it for you. Melly says, you are correct about your video game design major, yeah. Um, Glass by Grove says, IP law is scary. I try to select companies that are more welcoming of fan art and Disney is a no-fly zone. Yeah. That's what I was saying on one of my past streams, like, if I was really serious about wanting to do that, I would, like, write letters or, I don't know, email the PR teams of these companies and try to get documented permission. And then I would go crazy with it. But I also just don't have, like, a strong enough passion about any movies or video games that I'd want to create, like, a lot of art based off of them, so... I wouldn't do that for now, but if that were my style, it's probably the route I would take. We were just a paper plane. No to fly away. We were just a paper plane. Milk fat. Hi. Thanks for coming back. You're my um, Philly friend. Milk fat used to live in Philly and I used to live in Philly and we bonded over dim sum garden, which is a fantastic dumpling place in Philly. But now you live by Pittsburgh, I think. I'm going to do my best to remember these little tidbits you guys tell me because I want to build a little glass fan here and I think it's important that I treat you all as I would my friends in real life and I keep up with your happenings. I make it right. Melly says, what about memes? And she says, hello to milk fat. Glass by Groves would love to do memes. Yeah, I don't know, because like memes are just like whoever, like nobody knows who the owner is, right? Of like pick any like popular meme. I don't know. Maybe they could like, I don't know. I don't know. It would, I'd be too scared. Because, like, even, like, I've seen times when, like, like, a photographer, like, somebody will base their art off of, like, a photo that they just find on, like, Google or something, thinking it's just, like, a normal image, and then, like, the photographer will come out of nowhere and, like, sue them for basing it off of their photo. Because, like, how do you tell online if something is just, like, a stock image or, like, something that nobody cares about, or it's, like, a copyrighted photo by an actual photographer. 
because you don't have to put copyright, like a label on it for it to be copyrighted. As soon as you create it, it's copyrighted. So technically you could use litigation against anyone who copies that photo. I don't know. That's why whenever I make a design, I try like not to look at anything on the internet like the whole day I'm working on it cuz I'm scared I'm going to like subconsciously be influenced by something I see and then someone will get mad. John says, "Actually, come to think of it, doesn't Disney technically own the Simpsons since they own Fox?" Yeah, that's why I'm <laughs> nervous. Um, I don't know, but I figure the glass artists know if Snip Glass is out here making her entire profile Simpsons and, you know, broadcasting to her huge following. Shout out Snip. I love her, by the way. Then I'm like, if anyone's going to get in trouble, she'll get in trouble first, right? So then I'll have time to, like, delete all the shit off my profile. Girls. But I guess to protect myself from litigation, I'll just make a statement here that this design came out of my head, entirely my own. Uh, I'm not even aware of the Simpsons thing somebody just mentioned. So if this looks similar to whatever that is, that's purely a coincidence. Should be good, right? John says memes are technically getting owned now with NFTs. I know, that's crazy. Uh, Peanut Butter has been telling me he wants to turn my designs into NFTs, and I'm down with that. But then it's like, can I not make it anymore? Like, does whoever owns the NFT, if I were to make an NFT of one of my designs, does that person entitled to like a portion of the sale? every time I were to sell a piece of that design? Because I, I don't want that. It's also just wild to me that NFTs are even a thing. Because like, if you buy a digital image, anyone can just copy the image. I don't understand like, how you own it. Well, you can say you own it, but like anyone could just be like, I own this and copy it and like put it wherever and be like, yeah, this is mine. Very strange. Glass by Grove says a lot of these larger companies don't want to go after small guys like us. Yeah, but I was talking about this in one of my past streams and I brought up the Baby Yoda thing on Etsy. Like when that first came out, a bunch of Etsy sellers, little Etsy sellers, were started making Baby Yoda merch. It's like a handmade mug or a shirt or whatever with Baby Yoda on it. And I know Etsy deleted a lot of their entire accounts. Like they weren't very big. So that kind of made me think just because you're small doesn't necessarily mean you're safe, at least when it comes to Disney. Watch me end this stream and my Instagram's deleted. Because <laughs> Disney fucking came for me. Power to the glass makers. Screw the big names. I don't know. I have very mixed feelings on like something like this. Because like, I'm like, there is an original artist that made this character. Hypothetically. Because remember, this came out of my head. But hypothetically, there would be an artist that designed this character. And that person has definitely made so many millions of dollars from Disney off of it that it's like, they shouldn't really be bothered if a small artist is doing this. But it's still like their art. Now I'm feeling guilty.
Glass by Gerv says it makes them look bad to go after the little guys. Yeah. But I guess if the little guys together as a conglomerate start pulling too much money away, like with Baby Yoda, there's just enough people doing it, then they don't care if they look bad. I found out from him for you and me. Oh, we'll never be. Don't it make you sad about it? Milk Fat says, LOL, we need a lawyer in here. No, we don't. Nope. Don't need anyone ratting us out to Disney. Isn't that Disney again? Lucasfilm is owned by Disney now, I think. Yeah, the whole Star Wars thing is definitely Disney. John says there are a lot of even big name sports IG pages that reuse memes and such, and they get away with it. So you should be in the clear. Thank you for that vote of confidence, John. I hope you're right. If I'm not, I will be using this chat conversation as evidence that you legally gave me advice to do this. So you'll be responsible for any lawsuits, paying for them, I mean. You know what, guys? You know what I fucking did? I don't think it matters. Um, I think I wanted to use black-backed copper foil on this, and I didn't. But I think I'm being a little bit anal retentive about that. Because, like, so for people who don't do glass, there's normal copper foil that is copper on both sides. And then there's silver backed copper foil, which is silver on one side. And then there's black backed, which is black on one side. And let me get a good example. So when you solder your piece and you put black patina on it, which we're going to do with this piece, if you have any translucent parts of the glass, like right here, if you're using copper foil, then like at the right angle, you would be able to see the copper adhesive through the translucent glass. Does that make sense? I mean, this piece I used... Is this lead? No, this is copper foil. So this one, like when I turn it to the side, you can't see any copper because I use black back foil in there. And I think I wanted to do that with this one because this glass is translucent, but it's not like clear. Like if you can see the copper foil, it looks black through the glass. So I actually think that's okay. And I actually think I've been making this piece with copper backed foil. I think I made a note to myself to do black with this version. So it's not like if it's been working so far, I think it's fine. What do you guys think? Glass by Groves, do you agree? I feel like you're the most experienced other glass artist in here. Got her on the run. run. Um. Melly says, I get agitated because everyone knows these characters. They're so iconic, and I've already made money off of it, so, yeah. I just try to imagine how I would feel if I was, like, the person who originally drew Homer, and even if I was, like, a billionaire. I wouldn't want the money, but I would want people to give me credit. So, I don't know. But I see what you're saying, yeah. John, you and Mel are signing off and heading to bed. Thank you for joining, John and Mel. See you next time. Milk Fat says fan art is always a contentious topic. Bring Punch and Pie. Hi, thank you for joining. 
Melly says, also Baby Yoda, for example, on Etsy, people recreate that little guy and don't get in trouble for it. I don't understand. So when people see that, it gives others the okay. Yeah, it's like if a bunch of little guys get away with it, why shouldn't everyone else be doing it? I don't know. It's very tough. Milk fat, you're saying it looks black on the video. Yeah. I think I'm fine. Like I said, I've been making this piece using copper, so I think I'm okay. But see, I, when I'm streaming, I'm not like thinking as logically as I normally would be because I'm distracted. But definitely if this was like a clear piece of glass, I would absolutely have to redo it. But if we're going to stick with this, then now we can do that full outer strip of copper. And I might have to back you up for this. So now I'm going to go around and stick this foil along that whole edge that we just did. And when you copper foil the edge of a piece like this, you want to put it like right in the middle of the copper foil. You can see there's a little bit of foil sticking out on either side and you want it to be like even on both sides maybe a little more on the front side. You definitely don't want to have more on the back side because then if you think about a translucent piece of glass like this, if you have more foil on the back edge and the finished piece, you're going to be able to see through that glass and see like the wider solder seam on the back. And that's just like not very aesthetically pleasing. So when I'm copper foiling, I generally tend to make it a little bit wider on the front. Die anyway when I wake up to the morning sun. And it's a little hard to do this and keep it in your view as well. But I am trying to make sure that the foil is sticking very well in the valleys of each curve. Because if you don't get it stuck down in there, then it's going to be like stretched too widely in the end and it will break or tear in a place that you don't want it to. So it's really important that it's pressed down really tight in all those little valleys. You know I had some. When I get out of bed, a brand new day. Are any of you doing anything fun today? I always wonder when I do these live streams and people tune in. Like, are you guys like working? Cause everyone works from home now, but you can just like also be on Twitch and you don't have to admit if that's what you're doing, but it's kind of a cool benefit of being able to work from home. Melina, do you have to work today? Did Cindy call out again? And for a really deep curve like I'm approaching, I'll take my tweezers and use them to shove the foil in there because my hand can't get in there on its own. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow.
spring punch and pie. Is that a bush with eyes emoji that you just used? <laughs> Whose stream is that from? What you need is this request. Talk too much. Sound effect. I'll give you bona fide loving. Oh, 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 oh. I'll give you bona fide loving. That makes me feel old. Glass by Groves never answered me, so I'm assuming she left. I wanted her opinion. Wow. Oh, um, glass by Groves. I meant to use black backed foil on this and it just like slipped my mind because I was streaming and not paying attention to what I was doing because like the glass is see-through, but through the glass, the foil looks black. So I, I don't think it's a big deal. I think I'm okay to do copper. And I was saying, I think I've used copper foil on, the, on this piece in the past but I had a note in my head to use black backed foil instead of copper backed foil. But do you think, cause you can kind of see the foil through. So when I put the patina on the solder, it'll, it's all gonna look black, right? You think? Should be fine. It's a darker colored glass. Okay. I agree. I just wanted the opinion of another glass worker. I use almost exclusively silver back. Yeah, because a lot of your pieces have like the clear, you use clear glass for their background, I noticed. I find that silverback doesn't stick as well. Copperback sticks to glass really well, and silverback sticks the worst for me. And blackback is like in the middle, but like getting it to stick to the glass with silver can sometimes be really annoying. I ignored the chat too long. I missed something. Sam B says, I'm in the office today working, but I brought a small project to foil on my lunch break later. That's a good way to spend your lunch break. Um, a lot of artists, I think like pretty much every other glass artist will, I've noticed, will cut all their pieces and then grind them and then foil them. And I always, cut, grind, like one piece at a time, cut, grind, foil, and then the next piece, cut, grind, foil. So when I see these glass artists, like you just said, like doing these big batches of foiling at one time, I've never experienced that because I do one piece at a time. I just don't get how you guys get your pieces to fit together doing it that way. Like, the f I think the second piece I made, I think I have back here somewhere. Oh, come here. Um, this was the, I think the second piece I made. It's like a little fox. I don't know which is the front and the back because they're both like equally terrible. But like you can see that shape. Like I wanted it to be like a, a clean shape. Um, and I did it that way, that way where I cut and grind, ground everything and then I foiled at the end and it all fit together before I foiled into like a perfect shape. That song was too intense. And then after I put foil on everything and tried to fit it back together, it didn't quite fit. Like you can see this edge doesn't line up and the whole thing was just like, it just didn't fit anymore. Um, and I was very frustrated because I had spent so much time grinding it carefully to fit perfectly. 
And then when I put the foil on, it didn't match up anymore. And then from then on, I was like, all right, well, we're going to foil one piece at a time then. And that's been working really well for me. So that's what I do. And I don't really know why like nobody else does that. Bring Punch and Pie says, I put Twitch on now while I work the same way I put podcasts on. That's awesome. I support that. I'm way more fun than a podcast, right? Nah. Milk Fat says, I have trouble with my copper backed sticking to the glass, but I think I have a different brand than my usual. Milk fat, I was saying earlier that you can buy uh, isopropyl wipes. Because I used to have that same problem. And when I started using these, it really helped. These things right here. Walgreens 70% isopropyl alcohol wipes. I would just keep those right by my glass and every time I was ready to foil, I would just wipe the edge of the glass with those and then wait for it to dry for the alcohol to evaporate and it like worked wonders. And now I use mostly lead, so I usually don't have to worry about copper foil and so I don't have any on hand, but they were really helpful. Glass by Grove says, oh, would use the same copper backed on the other piece of green. Yeah, for your piece, that's why it's, that way it's more uniform. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't change it up. Whatever I go with, I have to go with. I was kind of thinking maybe I would do black on that other one and then undo all this <laughs> off stream and redo it with black. I'm not gonna redo it now to not torture you guys with it. But the OCD part of me is like, kind of wanting to do that. Glass by Grove says I do all cuts, all grinds, all foiling. Yeah, I think that's how like literally every other glass artist does it. Like I don't think I've met anyone else that doesn't do it that way. But then like how do you get your pieces to fit nicely after they're foiled? Because the foil adds like what is it, like a millimeter between all the glass? So when you were grinding and you had it all fitting up against each other perfectly, when you introduce that two millimeters of foil, it expands it and like throws it off the pattern. Unless when you're grinding, you leave just enough of a gap between your glass for the foil to fit in. But like, I personally couldn't do that, that uniform. But I guess uh, other people can. Bring Punch and Pie says, definitely more fun than a podcast. <laughs> I've learned so many cool tips and techniques from you already. Were you my first subscriber, Punch and Pie? I think it was between you and Sam B. I think you were the first, though. Thank you. That makes me really happy to know. Hopefully, I'm able to teach people a thing or two. Again, I'm no expert, mostly self-taught, so everything I say could be totally wrong. Uh, and what I'm doing now that I have all my saddles on and I have my long strip of copper, now this is what I was talking about earlier. I'm going in and I'm using my tweezers to like rock back and forth on each of the saddle. So I'm purposely breaking or tearing the copper, the long piece of copper foil at all of the saddles. Because when you put your glass around a curve or your foil around a curve, it's very likely it's going to tear somewhere. And if you control where that tear is, then you don't have to worry about it tearing in an unexpected place. So that's why the main reason why I prefer to do my saddles underneath my long strip. Because like I was saying earlier, this way I control where the foil breaks, not the foil.
Milk fat says, that's a good idea. But I forgot what I said, if, if you're talking about an idea that I had. <laughs> Melly says, the Joe Exotic glass piece kill, oh, was it up in the corner? Oh my God, that one was so fun to make. I was just, I was watching that documentary on Netflix and I was so like fascinated by that guy. I don't, I don't like him or anything. I'm not like a fan of him, but I was just like, I've never seen a human like this. And he like spoke to me in like a revolting, weird way. And I was like, I have to make him. Like a lot of times there'll be like a fad or a meme or whatever that people make out of glass. Like when COVID first hit, I remember a bunch of people made like toilet paper rolls because everyone was out of toilet paper and people would make like little COVID bacteria molecules out of glass and like no shame or disrespect on that stuff. Cause like if you hop on a fad like that, you're going to get a lot of attention, probably a lot more followers, a lot more likes. So it's definitely a good business strategy to like use fads like that to your advantage. And I normally never do that. But Joe Exotic was the one where I had to do it. And it wasn't for the purpose of like getting more engagement, but it, it did work out that way. Melina, I like that you're using the PB emoji. You're the only one with the ability to use a PB emoji right now. So thank you for using it. Bring punch and pie, you were the first, yeah. Thank you. You will always have a special place in my heart. Sambi says, honestly, my fit isn't the best in the world and it's a goal of mine to get better at it. I assume a lot of glass artists probably think that's an area they could improve upon. It's probably the cutting and the getting the perfect grinding fits. And I think that's okay because that's also something that as long as you're good at soldering, like if you have huge gaps, obviously that's going to be a problem. But as long as you can get it fairly close and you're like pretty good with your soldering iron, your work is still going to look probably pretty good and customers probably won't be super aware if something is a little off, like you as the artist would know, but I think it would still look good, like very good to most people. I'm pretty proud of my fits. I feel like I get them very, very close, but it took a lot of practice. Melly says, I couldn't finish the documentary. It made me so sad and angry. But Joe was deaf a character. Yeah, girl, I don't blame you. Just wild that some people live like that. And not only do some people live like that and like work in those places, but some people go to those places. And again, no like judgment, disrespect. Everyone lives differently. It's just not, probably not a thing I would ever be interested in doing. But I mean, I didn't grow up in like the middle of wherever they were, where there's probably not a lot going on and you don't have much of a choice. I don't know. Dude, when that girl got her arm bit off and she was so chill, or he, was it a woman who transitioned? I, f I think I should be saying he. Um, when he got his arm bitten off and he was so chill about it. I was, I was blown away. I would be fucking screaming so hard if my fucking arm got bit off. And he was just like, it happens. Part of the job. I'm like doing a very rough burnish around all the edges and I'm gonna go back in with this and do it solidly. But I just have to, like I said, break the foil in all the saddles before I can lay it down and like really go hard with the burnishing tool. Ooh, 
Looking pretty good. Melly says, I did that with the Bernie Sanders name of him. Yeah, that, that's a good example. Bernie on the chair. I saw a lot of glass artists making Bernies. That would definitely have been a good one to get a lot of eyes on your page and your work. I've done that mess around, having fun, don't put me down. Try to send, just not going in. I got something more to love until it's cheap. Mess around, don't put me down. You sweep me off my feet. This time, baby, I'll be. Melina, you have to post a picture of that like flower field moving castle thing you're working on. I want to see it. How much do strip? When you're foiling, you could also do it in chunks, like I usually do a single piece of foil over the whole piece of glass. But if you found that too difficult or it just wasn't working out for you, you could always do like just that strip and burnish it and then do like that area and burnish it. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. This time, I'll be bulletproof. We just about have it everywhere it needs to be. All right, so now Glass by Groves, you subscribed. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Thank you. Welcome to the Pixie Glass fam. Um, I love you. <laughs> I haven't decided what to do when people subscribe. It's either going to be me telling them I love them or bursting into t tears, like I almost did when I got my first subscriber. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, that's awesome. Um, I don't know if you were here in the beginning when I was going over some of the things I'm trying to offer to my subscribers, but the main thing will be, I'm gonna set my past broadcast to be subscriber only at some point soon, either like maybe next week. So if you can't join a live stream, you'll still be able to see the video after anytime you want. And then the other exciting thing is the giveaway bar at the top. I'm gonna try to set a always have a bar up there for donations and once we once we reach the donation goal which in this case is a hundred dollars i'll send out a poll to my subscribers letting you guys vote on any piece i'm on my website that's a hundred dollars or less and whichever one you guys want i'll do like a raffle style giveaway with the subscribers so hopefully that'll be fun something you guys enjoy and we can change that amount. Like if you guys ever want a piece, want me to do a raffle with a piece that's over 100, we can do that. I just figured 100 would be like a good starting point. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. 
Glass by Grove says you've given super helpful info, info today. You're a total boss. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's always awesome to hear stuff like that, but when, especially when like another glass artist and one that does good work who I admire like you says something like that, it's just a little bit more special. Thank you. Groves, you like came out of nowhere. Like I was looking at your, I think I only found your Instagram account like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, Dang, this girl's done a lot. Um, I and you didn't have like you don't have that many posts. Like you definitely didn't start posting on Instagram that long ago, and you already have like a lot of engagement and a lot of like really your like profile looks very good. I feel like it took me a long time to figure out like a nice aesthetic. So good job. My foil's kind of pulling away on this end. That's not cool. Obviously your foil should stick everywhere really well and you should try to make that happen. But if it does pull away in like a tiny curve, it's not the end of the world. As long as you have another, your other piece of glass that sits around it, butts up against it really well, it'll hold it in place. So like right here, this curve, it's not like sticking super well, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Going into Salvation Army, be back soon. Have fun, Melly. If you're donating something, have a good donation. If you're getting something, I hope you find something cool. Glass by Groves, I only started it four months ago. Yeah, it's not a long time at all. It's impressive. And your name is Riley, okay. Hi Riley, nice to virtually meet you. I'm never sure who wants to stay anonymous and who wants to go by their name because I know there are some glass artists that purposely don't put their name in their profile and like don't share, they don't show their face, they don't share any information about them themselves. I don't think I've had any of them pop into the stream, but I'm never, I always want to be sensitive to like not say people's names if I know them and they don't want the world to know them. I was listening to the radio this morning as I went to the post office. Oh, I meant to tell Melina that I shipped her order today. Melina, I don't know if you're maybe still listening, but your order has been shipped. And on my way to the post office, I was listening to the radio, and that song by Kid Rock came on that's like, I put your picture away, sat down and cried today. That song came on? <laughs> and... Like the very first, one of the very first sentences he says in that song, they like beeped it out. He was like, the lyric was like, I like to mix whatever with whiskey. And they beeped out the whatever. And I was like, what did he just say? I don't remember that song having a beep in it. And so I looked up the lyrics and he said cocaine. I like to mix cocaine and whiskey. And I wasn't even like, I mean, that's a weird thing to do, I guess, but... You can't say cocaine on the radio? Is that new? Because I feel like, one, I've never heard a beep in that song. And two, like, why can't you say the word cocaine? Are we just, like, pretending cocaine doesn't exist? Because, like, if the song WAP can play, <laughs> you should be able to say cocaine. All right, 
I think I think our foil is stuck on pretty good. So now I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife and cut away all the saddles so that we have a smooth line. And I'm not sure how sharp this knife is, so I'm going to start on the back side in case it's not super sharp. I'll try to pull you in a little closer. So whenever you're cutting copper foil like this, you definitely want to have a really sharp blade. It's going to make a huge difference and make it so much easier. I think this is fairly new, so I'm going to give it a chance. And when I'm doing it, I always try to go with the line of foil. So like this one, you can see the curve I'm cutting is going to have to go like towards me and then to my left. So I wouldn't hold it like this and try and like angle my arm at a weird angle. I'm going to have it, I'm going to want to be pulling the knife towards me, if that makes sense. So I'll be turning the piece a lot. So like I made that initial cut into myself and now I'm going to spin the piece. It's going to be a lot easier if I'm on my mat. Like, I think it's a lot easier to try to spin your glass instead of spinning your, your arm or your hands. I think you get a smoother cut. Could just be me, though. And then when I have it, I use my tweezers to pull off the excess. Get golden. It's up to the sky. And then I just use my burnisher to make sure it looks super smooth. And in that case, it does. So I'm going to move on. Better get golden. Golden. And it's important when you're doing this to make sure that you're cutting the saddle off at like the exact same width that the copper foil is supposed to be on the glass. Because like obviously when I'm cutting bits away, I'm controlling the width of this, what's left behind. So I could cut it like unevenly and make parts of it thicker, parts of it thinner, which would be a strategy if you're doing, trying to do something like decorative. But in general, you want to try to maintain a very constant width because that's going to give you the cleanest looking solder line. Only if you're mixing it with Jack, then it's dope. Me, you smoke. Too many problems. Looks really even and good so far. And again, this is the back, so if I mess it up a little bit, I'm not going to be super upset. 
but I'm going to do my best not to mess it up. Why? Glass by Grove says, ah, yes, the ever elusive perfect solder line. Yeah, it took me a long time to get my soldering to a point where I'm very happy with it, like a high, even bead. But even now, I prefer to use lead because you don't have to worry about that with the when you're using like a lead came channel because you're it's going to be even the whole way down the line. Like I would be using lead with this piece instead of foil, but I would never be able to get the lead to bend around all these little bush curves. You can see with this foil, it's the way I burnished it, it came to like an angular point. And I don't love that. So I'm going to try to curve, to carve away a little bit of a curve so it looks like more of a curve than a point. Probably just another like anally retentive thing that I don't have to do, but I do. Hand me the smoke. Got too many problems. Nope. There. Like, I don't know if you guys could notice that, but I made that point a little more curvy. Glass by Groves has not tried to use lead came yet, but you want to. I definitely recommend it. I always tell people you should start with copper foil because I think it's just like a glass fundamental that everyone should be capable of doing. And I also think it's a lot easier to do than lead. But I think once you've mastered that, lead is definitely a good thing to try out to see if you like it. I personally just think it's like so much cleaner looking, it saves me. I think it saves me a lot of time. I think personally it takes me a lot longer to solder than to curve lead around a piece. That could just be me though, because a lot of people do say that they find lead very difficult to work with and that's why they don't use it. Always in my mind. Cause it can be really hard. Like if you're going to have like tiny curves in your pieces, like I have a lot and you have in yours, came can be very difficult to work around them, but you can make it happen if you just try hard enough. And then there's nights that never end. Please. That there's a day you'll come back to me. I would do it all again. Glass by Groves, I feel like you should bring, consider bringing your art to like Comic Con or something. I feel like you would make literally a million dollars and people would go wild over your stuff. I think it'd be really fun to go to Comic-Con. I've never been, but I think it'd be pretty rad. I would definitely want to like dress up as something though. I don't know what I would dress up as. Peanut butter would think of something. Do it all again. I totally would, but they're hard to get into. Oh, are they? I've never like looked into it. I kind of just assumed anyone could kind of do it. 
pandemic really screwed with entry stuff. Yeah, I bet. Probably not going to have any chance until 22. That's a shame. Yeah. Well, I hope you get into one. Like some people are so into their fan art. I could definitely see you selling out of like everything. <laughs> I have to say. I was starting to go to like in-person craft fairs like pretty regularly right before COVID hit and I was very disappointed when they all got shut down because I was like just getting into the hang of it and I spent like $500 on like my setup and it's pretty much just been sitting in the garage ever since. definitely get back to it but um I don't know I feel like I'd rather wait until vaccines are like more prevalent and people aren't as scared which like you said will hopefully be 2022 in the closet. Check the deposits. Glass by Groves, I just looked at your Instagram and your stuff is so cool. See, I told you guys. And she agrees that your stuff would be a big hit at Comic-Con. I don't like transporting some of my larger panels. Is very scary, Glass by Groves says. Yeah. I guess I didn't think about that. Most of your panels are pretty big, aren't they? Maybe you could make smaller things just specifically for things like Comic-Con. Because that would also limit how many you could bring. Yeah, I'm like dreading the day I move. Peanut Butter and I are going to move out of this house eventually, probably within like the next five years. And I would like to just pay movers to do all of it because we've already moved a lot and it's a very stressful experience and we usually end up breaking our own stuff. But I don't think I would trust anyone but me to move all my glass. And I have no idea how I would trans... Like, I have so many glass sheets in here and a lot of them are like 24 by 24. I don't even like to think about it. My whip, same thing. And what if we move to like, I don't know, like Texas or Arizona or somewhere that's like super far away? I would think like over a U-Haul ride that long, it would all just like shatter. Kennedy. Innocent Pete. Howdy from Texas. Oh, you're from Texas. What a quinky dink. Join us. Peanut Butter and I talk about where we would move to if we moved. And Texas is pretty high on my list. One, I'm not going to move anywhere cold. And I know it does snow in Texas sometimes, right? But generally, you guys have a pretty warm climate. And I think you guys also have the same thing that Florida has where there's no income tax. That's also nice.
And I just like how, like, uh, free everyone seems to be in Texas. You guys are very much like, I don't know, do what you want. From the freeway. I got to see your fave. My fave what? My fave glass sheet? I actually got one that I really liked kind of recently. The remedy, the remedy to experience is a dangerous liaison, I say it's the comedy. It's like a mottled blue. I don't know if this is what you're asking about, but I want an excuse to show it anyway. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. And I'll probably never use it because it's so pretty. <laughs> do you guys do that too? Where if you get a really pretty piece of glass, you just like hoard it forever? I'll think of something. Yes, favorite glass. <laughs> I need it. CMB says, I got to be honest, I love Arizona. It has it all. Desert, mountains. I live in Flagstaff near the Grand Canyon. And I love it. Yeah, Arizona is another one on my list that I think would be pretty dope. I've never seen the Grand Canyon, but I've obviously seen pictures and it looks hella cool. I was in, I went to Las Vegas for the first time not that long ago. And I was like blown away by all the mountains and the just like the long stretches of emptiness, but that are also gorgeous, like with all the cacti about and the huge like reddish orange cliff faces. So pretty. Bring Punch and Pie likes that blue too. Bring Punch and Pie moved six years ago from up north down to North Carolina and you love it. You're not too far away from me then in North Carolina. I'm glad you like it there. I don't think I've ever been to North Carolina. Play on words. Spend. But it seems like we all have a common theme of being in the warm places, so I think we're a group of smart ladies. <laughs> Why anyone would ever live in, like, I don't know, Wisconsin? Or even, like, Chicago is, like, beyond me. Like Chicago, I've been to and it's a really dope city, but apparently their winters are just like negative degree every day. And you could not pay me to live in a place like that. Sam B says, there's lots of gorgeous land in the southwest. Sedona has some of the prettiest red rocks and some really cool hikes. Yeah, I feel like I, I like see on like the Insta influences that like all they do is take like gorgeous pics all day. I feel like a lot of their photos are tagged in Sedona. I feel like I've noticed that. Isn't that like where all the good wine is too, Sedona? I'm not a big wine connoisseur. I like wine, but I would not know a thousand dollar bottle from a ten dollar. Glass by Groves. 
Went to school in Iowa. Not doing cold again, ever. Ugh. I don't blame you. I cannot imagine that. What did you study, Glass by Groves? Art? Probably not. I don't know that many artists that like actually majored in art. It seems like it's a hobby people pick up. I mean like Instagram artists. I don't know like a lot of artists in real life, but I've met a lot of them through Instagram. My undergrad is in biological pre-med illustration? <laughs> what? <laughs> Basically the kinds of drawings in medical text? Oh, I had no idea that was even a major. That's kind of badass. And that is like art. So were you learning art or were you learning like med stuff? Or biology textbooks? Like were they teaching you more how to like draw or were they more teaching you about like this is the type this is all the pieces of this plant and this is how they function and because you don't really need to know that to draw them but I guess it would help It was a 50-50 split. I had studios and biology and chemistry labs. That's wild. Is, was your school like the only one to offer that? Because I've never, ever heard of that. It's really cool, though. Did you want to be? Or are you, I guess? I sh um, did you want to be like a textbook illustrator or do you do that did you do that or is there some other career you can do with that skill set must come down It's a great blend of science and art. I did not enjoy the digital aspect of illustration as much as the traditional media. Oh. They were teaching you all, it was all digital? I mean, that makes sense. If you're gonna do textbooks, it'd be way more efficient to draw it digitally, but for some reason I was thinking it was all hand stuff. And a lot of that field is moving towards digital. Yeah. Bring Punch and Pie thinks it sounds cool. It does sound cool for sure. But yeah, like digital art is very different from like hand-drawn stuff. That's definitely the smarter move. Like if you're trying to be an artist today and going to school for art, you should probably be learning digital art, right? I don't know there's something about like hand drawing like that's like personally you know I'm not a master of illustrator like you guys saw earlier but I could definitely only use that to do my designs if I wanted to but I'll always hand draw them first because that just like speaks to me more It was both traditional and digital. Okay. Sam B says, that's such a specific area. I never knew it existed. Yeah, me neither, Sam B. That's why I was asking Glass by Groves if like her school was like the only one to offer that major. Hello. 
you don't really think about it until you see it. It's sneaky art. Yeah, I don't ever remember like being in high school and flipping through a biology textbook and being like, wow, I'm blown away by this drawing. But I'm sure they were like really, really well done. But like what high school student is going to appreciate that when they're in the middle of a biology lesson they hate? Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> That's like the extent of what I remember from biology. And mitosis is when a cell divides in two. And something about the Krebs cycle. I wonder how I do on like a high school standardized biology test right now. I feel like it could come back to me, actually, now that I think about it. Name. I did not really enjoy any of my classes in college other than art. I majored in mechanical engineering and got minors in mathematics and art. But all I really graduated knowing was that I did not want to do engineering. I definitely didn't want to do math. Because I miss you. My imagination might do. Crazy because I miss you. This song always makes me very sad. If you, because when you listen to it, like you kind of think he's singing about, like an ex-girlfriend or something. But then at the end, he says it's about his dad, who died. And it makes me sad. Am I just going crazy because I miss you? Sam B says, I majored in anthropology, archaeology, and minored in museum studies. <laughs> Nothing that really had to do with making art. Anthropology. Anthropology. I'm not even sure I know what that is. I know it's a name of a store that sells fancy, expensive stuff. Is that like um, kind of like social studies? But like next level social studies, anthropology. Do you work in a museum now? I think I've asked what everyone has done for work and I might be jumbling in my head if you already told me or not. I know, I think you said you were in an office. Glass by Groves took a lot of primate classes and courses on osteology. I definitely don't know what osteology is. Tell me what that is. Is that like osteoporosis? Wait, really, is that the study of bones? If I had to guess, if I had to use my etymology skills, 
I think that's correct. Um, I would say that's the study of bones. Did I just Sherlock Holmes the shit out of that? I think I did. Sam B says, I love my osteology and zooarchaeology zoo classes. My favorite way to learn the skeleton was to draw it. Anthropology is the study of humans. And it is bone study. Zoo archaeology. That's another one I've never heard of. So if I had like a, a sick horse, could you guys figure out what was wrong with it? Because <laughs> you know how the skeletons of animals are supposed to look? If I gave you a broken horse and an x-ray machine, could you diagnose the horse? I did a lot of bone category work, says Glass by Gross. I've drawn almost every bone in the body. You guys have some wild areas of study that I like never would have assumed were actual things. But it makes sense. Like somebody has to uh, be drawn them bones. I never did before. Ships at sail. For me. For me. Looks pretty even. Maybe this guy we have to clean up. I think it'll just refocus on its own. another stream investment I would like to make one day is upgrading my cameras. These ones are pretty good, but I've seen some people um, who don't use webcams. They use like actual handheld cameras that seem to give people a much better view. But I think they're all like a thousand dollars. So that would be like way, 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 way down the line. Sam B says, I wish I worked in a museum, but I work in an interior design firm. Archaeology is the study of past humans through the traces they leave behind, and zoo archaeology is the study of animals' remains in the context of how they interacted with humans. Well, then it makes a lot of sense that you studied those things together. <laughs> they seem like they would go together very well. I also think interior design would be really fun. When I was in high school, I actually took a couple of courses at FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. I took classes in interior design because I thought maybe I would want to do that. I think I would have liked it. I remember we had to like, we had to draw a lot of like pictures of like rooms with different furniture in them and like pick out different fabrics and shit that went together. It was pretty fun. Are you actually doing the design work? Like, are you the one picking out the frame or like the furniture and the colors and stuff? Or are you doing more of like the back end stuff of like marketing or like client communications or whatever else goes on at a interior design firm that's not design? I don't do any of the fun stuff here though. I mostly order material and fuss with paperwork. That's no good. Could you become an interior designer if you wanted to? If you went to your boss and said you wanted to move to a different department, would they let you? It's 
a shame that like the coolest jobs don't seem like the ones that pay very much. The high paying jobs are also boring. Like everything today is just sitting behind a computer. I mean, if you're sitting behind a computer making art, that's one thing, but I know when I had my full-time consulting career, it was pretty much nothing but like PowerPoint presentations and Excel workbooks. And it was just really boring. Baby, is this love for real? Can you know how this feel? Hot baby. Hot baby. I think we are done. With this guy, anyway. With me. What to do with you? Is this love for real? There, that looks pretty even. It looks like right up here you can see through to the the back foil so I'm gonna flip it over and carve away some of the back foil really got your hold on me away from me to do with me let me know your arms to feel the beating of your heart baby there we go think we're looking good Bring punch and pie says, what did I consult on? Stupid shit. Uh, it was like, it could, it could have been anything. Like I worked for a like very large global firm and they just like had a bunch of different clients in a bunch of different fields and they just sent consultants wherever they were needed. So like we had like some like energy companies, some healthcare companies, some like purely technology companies. And I mostly worked in like the healthcare space. So like health insurance or on the provider side, like hospitals. Ricky Ticky, Ricky Ticky Bobby Wobbin. <laughs> Thank you for following Ricky Ticky Bobby Wobbin. Um, but yeah, I was mostly like doing like technology platform work for health insurance companies. And I just really, really didn't like it. And I also just didn't like the idea of working for health insurance companies because I, I don't know, I don't think they always have people's best interests in mind. I feel like a lot of it is just a money grab. I don't know. I just really didn't like anything about it. <laughs> Sam B says, I could probably express that wish and my boss would help me, but there's not any room at this branch for me to advance into a design position. You got, you got to get rid of one of the designers is what that means. I do like my job though. My best friend is the designer here. Okay, not that designer. <laughs> but they pay me well and I have benefits. My last job was a bookseller. Oh yeah, you were telling me about that. So the pay and benefits left a lot to be desired but I was so passionate about the work. Yeah, that's like the 
battle, right? Like you can either get paid a lot and like not be happy at your job or you can love what you do and like don't make any money with it. I mean, obviously a lot of exceptions to that, but like that seems to be like the general rule. Well, if you stay there long enough, there'll probably be room for another designer eventually, right? Like people have to retire at some point or get promoted and then you take their spot. You feel like you're really spilling your guts here. Sorry, folks. Sam B, you're part of the Glass fam. We're here for you. Do all the venting and spilling of your guts that you want. We'll support you. So you guys can see I got my one bush piece all done, which means I can start on the other one. And just looking here, right where that little bush divot meets the other one, I want to make sure that there's enough of a gap there for foil to fit. And it's going to be close, but I think we're OK. I'd rather have it be too tight than too loose. And I'm, I'm just looking and making sure that the copper foil, copper backed foil I use is gonna look black and I really think it will. So I'll start in the next one doing copper backed foil. I apologize, this is probably like not the most exciting stream to watch. Foiling definitely isn't the most fun part. But at least I'm doing like a hard piece of foil. So hopefully people are like learning from it, even though it's not super thrilling. Uh, uh, uh. And if anyone has joined and doesn't know what I'm doing, the little Homer Simpson bush piece in the top left corner is going to be the end product. I'm in the stage now where I've ground out some of the pieces in glass, and now I have to cover them with copper foil. And then I'll get to grinding out more of him. But these are the only pieces I have right now so far. Also, this song is a jam. What was it? I have it on shuffle, so I don't, only when you're wasted. It was Stella by All Time Low, I think, if that was the one you were talking about, which is like one of my all time favorite songs. So you have good taste in music. Glass by Grove says it's cathartic. Okay, good. I can calm people. I can emit calming energy as I foil. But she feels so clean. Wow. Craves affection. So I use protection. And I know she loves me. She loves everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Da -da -da -da. I really like English Muffle. Like, I think this might be my favorite glass texture. I showed you guys my favorite glass. This definitely isn't my favorite glass, but in terms of like a cool texture, I really like it. It's like subtle. It's not like in your face and it's easy to work with, but it's pretty and you can do a lot with it. Like a lot of textured glass is kind of difficult to cut and difficult to foil and very difficult to lead. But not this one. And I know 
she oh did my camera stop stella by all time low can you guys still hear me but my workbench is frozen is that what you're seeing I think my favorite texture is water glass, milk fat says. <laughs> you mean no texture? Oh, no, I know what water glass is. It, it has like a very, very slight texture. That's another one that's like easy to work with for sure. I think my camera is frozen, so let me see if I can fix that. I don't know what the deal is here, but the camera over my workbench just like turns off. It seems like it's like every two and a half hours, it just shuts itself off. This is another reason or another goal I have is to get an actual like decently made computer because the one that I'm using right now peanut butter built and it's from like 12 years ago and it just does weird ass things like this all the time let me unplug it I guess Hopefully you guys can still hear me. I think you lost my face. And that's because I am unplugging all my cameras from my computer to see if I can get them to work again. <laughs> <laughs> 